All right, guys, welcome back. The, one of the last things we got to do on this bobber project is the rear fender and wire up the taillights, of course. We are so close. The shop is an absolute disaster, but I'm determined to get this done so we can get it on the road. Okay, so the rear fender is arguably one of the most important parts of a bobber build. Not that it's really important to anything other than looks, but as I mentioned in an earlier video, the term bobber comes from bobbing or cutting the rear fender. So that's that's kind of the whole point of the bobber. I had already cut this previously up just above uh, where the rear, the stock tail light used to be. So I was trying to look at it and see if I can chop it more, but here's my, my thought. So the 93 has these curved struts, unlike um, I think some of the later ones had the straight ones. So these curved struts mount about there and you can see this last bolt hole here is the really the only place it mounts. Oh, there's one here and there's one back here. Now, with the solo seat, which sits about there, not an issue, right? They're, you're supported by the frame. Now, I still want the option to run the pass the the a seat for the passenger. So I bolted this up a little bit and kind of sat like I was a passenger to see how it would work if I didn't run those struts all the way back and it seemed plenty sturdy however I'm not the one who's going to be riding back here um, if it was my seat no problem wouldn't mind risking that and saying it looks like it's fine uh, I'm not willing to put that judgment for whoever's riding on the back so I'm going to keep it about this length still just so I make sure I have that passenger seat supported but I do want to clean up this back end a little bit. I cut it pretty crudely and I also didn't do such a good paint job when I just did a quick rattle can so I'm gonna try and make this a little bit nicer but I'm not gonna be trimming too much more off of it. So this right here on the fender is where the old circuit breakers used to sit with the MU I don't need this and you can see this originally was a red fender and I actually just gave it a quick rattle can job when I first got the bike to make the fenders match the uh, the tank. I'm going to take these off and we're going to do this the right way this time. Okay, so I want to try something out here. Now, as I told you, I rattle can this and it didn't come out great. There's lots of flaws. I'm not even sure if I waited long enough to dry, for it to dry before I started riding it, so it's just not great looking, and obviously I didn't even take off the, the plastic and stuff that was on there. So this time I want to do a little better. Now, there's been a product that I've been wanting to try for a little while now, and I figured between this and the sprocket cover, they're small enough projects where if it doesn't come out well, I can always redo it, and that is this 2K clear. Regular rattle can clear doesn't harden the same way that two-stage spray clear goes, right? If you put it in a paint gun, you mix the harder stuff, and that's what gives it that really hard, uh, like enamel, that finish that, that you can shine a lot better. It's not to say you can't get good results with spray paint clear, but it just will never be as good. So now, what Eastwood's done is they basically made a two-part in here. So you take this off, put it on the bottom, there's a little pin, and you basically explode the chamber that's in here, for lack of a better word. So once you pop that and mix it, it has a shelf life of like a day or two. So I've always been, I've been curious to try this because it sounds like it's just as good as the spray gun. Obviously the application is the same. If you were doing something much bigger, it wouldn't be worth it. But I wanted to try it and I figured this is a good time to try it. So I'm going to still rattle can this with uh, regular Rust-Oleum automotive paint. And then I'm gonna try hitting it with this and I'm, I'm curious to see the results, so. Okay, so I made this little cardboard template, kind of marked out here. I think just taking off that corner, obviously I gotta watch out for the hole, just taking off that corner on both sides will just make all the difference in the look. Cause right now, kind of looks like I quickly cut it with a grinder. Cause that's exactly what I did. So, see if I can shape this up a little bit. Not too bad. Not perfect, but not too bad. 
All right, so after stripping the old spray paint I had on here off, I, I hit it with DA sander a little bit just to kind of scuff up the original paint. I don't bring this all the way down the metal. Uh, you, you could if you really wanted to, but the factory does a better job of adhering straight to the metal anyway. I'd rather piggyback off their finish and just scuff this up and prime right over this. I did get to bare metal in some spots where it might have been a little high or I just sat too long thing. But that's okay. Back when I originally had chopped this, I had to, where the tail light had mounted, I had to uh, fill those uh, holes with a weld, bondo over that and just kind of smooth that out. So I'll redo that and I'm also going to work on some of these spots. There's just some little things I'm going to try and hammer out and make flat again, but then we'll go back to pinkness. So the base layer went on pretty good. A little bit of orange peel, we'll see what happens when we clear coat it. I'm not too concerned about this spot right here because that's going to be under the seat. So one really cool thing about this spray can is you can actually adjust the fan pattern to be vertical or horizontal or I guess 45 if you wanted. Alright, so it's been a couple hours and you can see it's definitely much glossier but there's still a lot of orange peel on here which I can hopefully sand and buff out and polish out so I'm gonna let this thing I think it's got a cure for 12 to 18 hours so it's gonna sit for a little while and then we'll go into the wet sanding but overall pretty happy with it so here it is all dry and you can see you know in the light the orange peel on it but overall it looks pretty good um, so now I'm gonna wet sand these and try and get the much of this um, orange peel off as I can. So you're going to start with wet sanding with 1000 grit, 1500, and then 2000. And then we'll try and buff it and see how, shine, how much of a shine we can get on this. So I got this like a really nice even dull all the way around. It's not perfect, you know, if, if I'm honest. You know, I got some spots there which I may have could have gone deeper. I'm just concerned if possibly my orange peel was so bad, if I sand everything down to that level that it might cut through to the base. So I'm going to live with that and chalk that up to a bad paint job on my part. You know, I don't want to go all the way down to the to the base coat and then have to do this whole thing again. So, so I'm gonna give this a shot and see how it comes out. I'm gonna move on to buffing this. Buffing, I got this big guy, which I don't think, I think might be a little overkill. I'm not gonna be able to get this to it. So I'm gonna try this little one for a drill. Um, it's not gonna be as easy to work with, I think, but I think it'll get contours and stuff better. So I'm gonna give this thing a try. I've also got these two right here. I've got a compound and a polish here. So I think this is part of a three-step process. I think there's supposed to be a two in between um, I've used these before just one in three and not had an issue so I'm gonna give that a try again and see how it comes out start to see a little bit of shine coming in. I'm beginning to think I did not wet sand it enough, but we'll see. 
So I'm getting a little disappointed. This isn't coming out as good as I had hoped. Um, it's not that it's bad. I mean, it's better than the Red Fender or just spray paint, but I was hoping it would get a little more shine and I'm not sure whether that is doing it with spray can stuff and, and you know, just not being able to get as good a result or if it's my skill level, not able to paint it well, not able to sand it well, maybe I just need more time on the grit. But you can see it's got a little bit of shine to it, but I was hoping to get similar to matching like the, the stock stuff. So this is like the, what goes over that little control module cover and it's, it's not even close. Um, I'm gonna keep trying at this, but I'm wondering if it's just one of those things where it is what it is, but we'll see. So with the fender and taillights now on, I just need to wire up the taillights and I use these bullet style connectors which aren't my favorite but it's nice that it allows me to disconnect the lights if I ever needed to remove the fender. So I might go back and replace them at some point but for now they work and gonna go around through a quick test of the taillights here and everything is looking good so far. So all said and done, now that the fender's on, I'm kind of iffy on the results. I mean, it's black, it's a solid color, it kind of matches, uh, but overall the paint job just did not come out as good as I thought it would. I'm trying to remind myself that this was a, a rattle can job and not like a professional paint job, but I know you can get better results from a rattle can job. I've seen a lot of people do some really nice paint jobs with rattle cans, and it comes to probably my lack of experience with painting, but either way, I'm a little disappointed, but I can always come back and paint the fender anyway because not only does the fender probably need to be redone at some point, but there's other spots in this bike like this tank that needs some paint as well. I mean, it's not the end of the world. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect to be a really fun bike to ride. So the only thing left to do now is break in the engine, which might be the most fun part of this build or the scariest. We'll find out. Mm -hmm.